So you are you are on your you're on your break. This is the day before the uh, insurrection on January sixth at the U.S. Capitol. And tell me what happens. You're it's a mob of folks there, and they're questioning why are you here. Explain what happened. So I was on break, as you said. I got encountered with this group of people. At first, they one of the person Annie Lorenz, who got. Yeah. A- charged with assault against me. She did approach me and ask to be my friend. I could tell that her and her friends were heavily intoxicated. One of them were was Teresa Duke. She began to ask to be my friend. She offered me liquor. She asked who I was with. I said, I'm here by myself. She said, no, are you with Trump? I said, no, I'm not. She said, so you're with Biden. I said, no, I'm not. She said, oh, so you're Antifa. And she started to scream out to the crowd, she's an Antifa. I wasn't aware of what that meant. And at that time I was on Instagram Live just to show everybody how it was being treated and what was going on. It was a group of protesters coming down. They were screaming F Antifa, F Antifa. So I asked her again, what does that mean? What did you call me? She said she didn't call me anything. And she just continued to ask to be my friend. That group that was coming down screaming F Antifa, they began to proceed to storm the police barricade. So I began to walk away, away from everything that was going on. Annie Lorenz and her friends began to follow me. I asked them to stop following me, stop harassing me. Please stay away from me. They didn't have on masks they began to proceed to try to take my mask off of my face. They tried to take my phone out of my hand. They kept brushing up and bumping and hitting me. They tried to take my phone out of my pocket. I did ask them, were they trying to rob me? So I proceeded to try to walk to the police barricade. While I'm trying to defend myself as far as her trying to take my phone or my mask and kind of just moving her hand away out of my personal space. The gentleman that is seen trying to hit me after I defend myself against her, he was already hitting and assaulting me. A police officer seen everything that was going on. They pulled me to the police barricade and they told me to stand by until they felt as though that it was safe. The group walked away and he told me that it was okay for me to go after a couple of minutes. When I walked away, As soon as I was walking away from the police barricade, I was surrounded again by the same group of people, but they came with a larger crowd. At this time, I'm being grabbed by several different people. I hear racial slurs of hang the NB, hang them. They all deserve to die, kill her. I'm being pulled from every direction. I'm trying to walk away. They keep surrounding me and and enclosing on me. Someone actually Hulk spit on me moments prior to the video that surfaced that everyone is seeing. A lot of people do not understand that the videos that you are all seeing is not my first encounter with this group. It is my second one. So at that time, once someone spit on me and she's reaching across my face and still continuously hitting me, grabbing my phone, trying to grab my mask, I defended myself. I hit her one time and I stepped away because I did not want to seem like an aggressor or I went down there to start any problems. I do not promote violence at all, but I do not stand or appreciate hate crimes. I do not stand for it. So I defended myself. And at that point I was taken to the police barricade and they were aware of what was going on. They were letting me through. And at that point, I was attacked from behind from Miss Lorenz and pepper sprayed and escorted behind the police barricade. I was then told from another officer after I was escorted to the side, I was told that I had to leave from behind the police barricade. I could not stay there. I could not stay behind the police barricade. They told me I had to go back into the same crowd that I just got attacked by. I didn't have my vision. I had lost one of my shoes and they did not give me a police escort. So I had to walk back in that same crowd back to my job. Later on, less than an hour after 
I went back to retrieve my items that I lost during the, the situation. The police were aware. They told me that I was an assault. I was a victim of assault and a victim of a hate crime. Uh, once I got my belongings from the police barricade that the encounter happened at, a detective came to me and he said that I was a victim of a hate crime. He took down my information and my story. It was officers around that confirmed everything that happened and my story that I told the detective. Less, he said that he had to walk away for a couple of minutes. He came back less than five minutes later. He told me to put my hands behind my back and told the officers to place me under arrest. I was placed under arrest. They had to find a female cop in the crowd of protesters. She came and searched me. I was put in the vehicle and in handcuffs and I was not read any of my rights and I was transported to a police station and told that I was charged for assault. Wow. I mean, this, this sounds something straight out of Jim Crow. You're literally walking and let, let's be clear, you're, you're attacked by a mob of, of white people who are screaming about a president who is a known racist. Uh, this may seem like a silly question, but were you, were you afraid for your life? I was definitely in fear for my life. And I still am at this point. I have received numerous threats, hate messages on my social media, my cell phone. My family has also been harassed. I am in fear for my life at this point. And I was at that point as well. And so your job, your job has let you go? My job has called me. They reached out to me about three days after the incident happened. And they told me that I was suspended pending investigation without pay. Mm. And how does that, how does that make you feel that they're suspending you without, without pay? It's been a burden, especially since I just purchased the home. I have bills and things that I have to take care of. They haven't really reached out as far as support and I haven't been able to tell my side. So that's how I feel about my job. I'm not really able to speak too much on it. Sure. I mean, let's be real. You know, we're in a pandemic right now. It's hard to, it's hard to get a job. You know, Congress can't even put through a, a, an appropriate stimulus package. Like this just, I can imagine it's scary. Yeah. Helena Duke, the, uh, the mother, the, the daughter of uh, the woman that you were defending yourself against, she's came out and, and, uh, and supported you. And I'm sure that has to mean something that this, this, that she's saying that my, my, my mother clearly incited, uh, incited, uh, you know, this kind of violence, you know, really provoked this person. Uh, do you feel like that will have any, any bearing when it comes to your, when it comes to the investigation? I do. I honestly, I didn't see all of her posts or anything. Once I got released from jail and situated, I did see her going viral and I saw her tweets. She has supported and we have been in contact. We were on FaceTime the other day, just talking regular stuff just to see how she was feeling and just trying to just show my support because her and her friends have given me a lot of support even before I could even see it. And she's just been supporting me. And I also feel bad just to see or hear about how she's been treated from someone that I I don't even know. And I was treated horribly. So I just feel bad for her, not even just feel bad, but I send my love and everything to her. So we have been in contact and that's pretty much it about when it comes to her. What are, what are the next steps legally? You know, are you, are you facing jail time? You know, what, what are the next steps? Right now I'm just charged with assault and I have a stay away order from Miss Duke. As far as what I'm trying to do, as far as moving forward legally, it's in the works or we're still discussing it. So I'm not really able to give you any information. And like I said, I will try to keep everybody updated as things move forward. And Ashanti, uh, once again, we're talking to Ashanti Smith, who defended herself against a mob of Trump supporters. And she has since been suspended from her job without pay. The next day, when you see this uprising at the White House and uh, a police officer has been killed, and again, you, you, aren't, you aren't a police officer, 
uh, you made that clear, but what were your thoughts when you see the next day? And mind you, you've been arrested at this point. You know, you've, you've been arrested, but what are your thoughts when you see these Trump supporters? Um, we don't know for a fact, but some of them I'm sure were in that crowd harassing you maybe, and they, they were in that Capitol breaking in. To be honest, I actually didn't see what was going on as far as the Capitol. I wasn't aware. Once I was released from jail after hearing what my charges were, I was actually released into the Trump protest. And a lot of people did recognize me. I didn't know what had happened at the Capitol until I finally got to the police station to try to receive my items. And they told me that they were on lockdown. Just to be in that crowd and then once hear what happened, it was very frightening. And just to know that I was walking amongst everything that was going on and I wasn't even aware at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What can people do now? People want, want to support you. Uh, they want to see that you're okay. And, you know, legal thing, legal bills are, are, are not cheap. So what, what can they do? All of my social media is now public. So my Facebook page is Ashanti Smith. It's A-S-H-A-N-T-I. Last name Smith, S-M-I-T-H. My Instagram and my Twitter is at underscore Ashanti, A-S-H-A-N-T-I, underscore S, underscore, I believe. <laughs> and my cash app, a lot of people want to ask about my cash app because they don't want to contribute to GoFundMe. It is flawless, right. dollar sign, flawless with six S's. Perfect, perfect. Uh, before you go, I just, I do want to ask you just as somebody who had this experience and you know, how do you feel right now as far as, because uh, I mean, God forbids, this could have been a lot worse. This could have been a lot worse. You know, how do you feel right now as far as what's going on in the country in this, uh, this, this, it feels like we're just in some kind of war. And, you know, when, when, when we as black folks try and tell our stories, uh, we're told that, oh, you're being overdramatic, all oh, racism is over. And considering you just went through that, how has this changed you? Mentally, it's been very hard. It's been hard to sleep, hard to eat. But the support that I'm just receiving from everywhere, it's, it's been mm -hmm. making me push and keep going. I understand now, like I've been saying, it's not just my fight anymore. And I've been realizing that I'm fighting for everyone that's supporting me from every different ethnicity, race, and all of that. It's not just my fight anymore. I just want everybody to know, even if you can't support me or support me financially, it's not just about the money. If you can just repost anything that is on my page or just repost my story and just keep spreading the movement and don't let it die because we will stand up and make this a movement. Yes. Listen, you're you're 28 years old, uh, living your life, working, and I hope that your job gets it together. I really, really hope they do. I hope they have some kind of understanding. Ashanti Smith, once again, thank you so much. I'm wishing you the best of luck and, and stay safe out there and stay safe in D.C. Thank you so much, and I appreciate the opportunity. It was great speaking to you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day.